OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, so thank you everybody for either coming back or joining us for this uh, part two of our Google Form series. I'm very excited to share ways for you to share your Google Form, right? So now you've created this beautiful Google Form and now it's time to share it with the world. So today I'm going to be covering that and I'm gonna be walking you through some of those things. So my name is Monica Espinosa. I am an ESL instructor at Torrance Adult School. Um, my email address is on this slide. Uh, you may contact me if you have any questions or if you'd like to share good recommendations for summer books, uh, please go ahead and contact me. All right, so for today, today we have a very busy day. Um, today you are going to be able to share your Google form through creating hyperlinks, hyperlinks with, it, with text and hyperlinks with an image. Uh, you are going to create a shortened URL on the bit.ly bit.ly website and whoops and you're also going to be editing my spelling so we're creating a QR code okay now if all of these terms sound very foreign to you do not worry I will break down uh, each of these for you so they're uh, to lower your effective filter all right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a fun quiz all right I don't want to scare you it's just a it's just a fun little quiz to introduce you to some of the terms um, and just a way to show you how to use Google Forms. So um, Marjorie, were you, able, uh, were you able to send that link for the quiz on through the chat box? Okay, got it. So wow, 65 responses, that is awesome. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about some of these uh, Google Forms, the beginning, the first questions, okay? So the first questions were just a little bit about what you might remember from last time when we spoke about, in when we spoke about the settings for Google Forms. All right, so uh, that is correct if you chose, if you chose true for the first one, right? Uh, re we talked about how there were some boxes and settings in uh, Google Forms that if they were checked, uh, it would require uh, the user to sign in with their Google account. So right now, collect email address addresses is one of those is one of those boxes that would require uh, the people to sign in. Okay, got it. Oh, yes. All right. So if I have this box check, this restrict to users in Torrance Unified School District, which is my school district, um, that is, you know, of course, a person has to have a TUSD um, email address. Um, so they, even though if they work in the district, they still can't use a personal email, right? So you, uh, the user would not be able to access the Google form if they don't have district email. And, you know, just like we had a little run in, you know, a little accident with a link uh, right before you took this quiz. Um, thank you for remaining for, uh, you know, being patient. And yes, of course, you should not panic. And just let me know, just let whoever know that there is a little, um, little error happening. So thank you for your patience, everyone, and your participation. All right, so to preview the Google form, yes, that little I, that little I, and yes, I believe that, I saw it in the chat, if uh, there was a mistake in the question regarding the font and background color, and the answer was, uh, was yes, I accidentally um, selected the wrong one. So please, please take this as an example, you know, I can, I've looked over this Google form. Uh, I told Melinda I was obsessing over the details. And this is just one detail that I, uh, that I dropped the ball on. So I'm very sorry about that. But yes, it is the palette. The palette will allow you to change the background color and the font. 
Okay, what else do I have to go over? All right, this little question right here regarding the mathematical symbols. I just threw that in there as an extra. I'll talk about it a little more, but I added this because last, um, last week there was a, a question regarding um, how to add math symbols to Google Forms. So I can, I did my homework, I looked it up, found different ways for you to do that, and I can talk about that at the end of our presentation today. Please remind me, okay? Um, but I will do my best to, to um, answer that question if that person is here or if anyone else is interested. All right, so for sections three and four, I'm going to go back into, I'm gonna go back into my presentation and go ahead and start talking to you about URLs, um, URL shorteners, and QR codes. All right, Melinda, are we good on questions so far? We have one that I was just about to ask someone to type it in the chat or the Q&A, but I'll, I'll ask it to you now. Does trusted organizations mean personal email accounts? Um, I, I doubt it. And you know what, Melinda, I actually do not know who that would be like if there's if other organizations outside of a school district or outside of whatever organization is using Google Suite, if they if they have some kind of list that they, I they imagine they do, they can, yes. They, right. So mm -hmm. I imagine that those would be trusted organizations. And if, if it, you know, to, to me, I'm just a lowly teacher. Um, I think it's, the district might feel that it's not necessary for me to know who these trusted organizations are. And at the moment, I don't, I don't need to know who these trusted organizations are in order for me to communicate with my students. That is a great question though. And now I am curious as to who might be a trusted organization for my district, but okay, Melinda, got it. Um, all right, so going back to sharing your Google form. So once again, you created this Google form, you've looked at it obsessively like myself, you still found a mistake. Um, so now you want your users to interact with your Google form, right? If it, whatever it might be, a quiz, a survey, um, a sign-up sheet, whatever kind of form you create. Um, all right, so what I would like for you to consider when you're sharing your Google form is how do you, you know, how might your users access the form? Uh, you know, would it be through computer or smartphone? You know, tablet and smartphone have similar uh, views for the user. You know, the tablet is just a little bigger than a smartphone, but it's a similar view. So I uh, think about how your user is going to access this form because um, depending on how they are going to use it, maybe sharing your form through a hyperlink or a QR code or a URL shortener might be the best option for you, right? And that is something that is completely up to you. Um, also consider your users' liter digital literacy skills. You know, in, in my experience with my students, I really had to work on having them understand what a link was and uh, click here and um, you know, teaching them about that or how to use a QR code. So just consider, consider the way that you are sharing your Google form, um, that it is easy for your, your audience to access. And uh, one more thing is about your form. How is your form best viewed? You know, in the quiz that you just, uh, that you just took, there were some images, uh, you know, there were some images, um, but it was mostly text. So, you know, if you want your, your students or your whatever audience you might have to complete a form that has lots of pictures or maybe includes some videos, maybe it might be better for them to access it through a computer rather than a small screen like a smartphone. Like a smartphone. Uh, so consider, uh, consider these, these things when you are deciding how to share your Google form. I mean, ultimately, it's up to the user to use whatever 
device, you know, but uh, it's just for you to keep in mind as well. Um, all right, so how do I share Google Forms in my class? Uh, one, one way is that students click on a link and they click on a link either through my website, uh, my email, an email that I send them or, or a document that I send them, right? Um, another way is that students click on an image, which is also either on my website, on an email or a document, which I do less frequently on a document, okay? So that would mean that a student would click on a picture, such as the one I have on this slide, and that would take them to another location uh, where the information would be available to them. Um, so, uh, third, uh, I create a shortened URL, right? And I share this shortened URL with my students, either on my website, email, a document, um, or a virtual meeting, okay? And lastly, I create QR codes, okay, that I also share, website, emails, doc, and or a virtual meeting, okay? Are we good on questions, Melinda? We had a, one come up, um, interesting. Uh, if you do not collect emails, because not all students have emails, will you still be able to see their responses? Yes, you can see your, their responses, however, one of your questions on this uh, on your form would have to be name would have to you know type in your name and if you are not collecting email addresses right let's say that you took this quiz right now and you viewed you were able to view your score right away right now if if I selected, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the setting option so that I can show you. So I'm gonna exit this screen and I'm going to go to my Google Forms, okay, my settings. So right now, currently, I am not collecting email addresses for the quiz that you just took. Therefore, you were not required to sign in. On this quiz, I did not require, uh, an, I'm sorry, I didn't add a question for you to answer your name or to enter your email address, right? Now, there is an option when you are creating a, a quiz, okay, this is only for quizzes, uh, where you, you can release the score, uh, you know, immediately after, after a user takes it. So you, like you, what you just did, you were able to view your score and the answers right away. Or this option, which is later after manual review, Again, it's gonna turn on email collection, Gmail, okay? So that, that does limit, that does limit uh, your audience. So you would have to make sure that your students have a Gmail address. And I, I highly recommend that you encourage your students to create a Google email because that way they would, uh, you know, you would be able to work, work with them uh, probably easier if you're using other Google applications. So by selecting this later after manual review, if a student, if a student types in their email, right, and um, maybe they type it in uh, incorrectly, then the student will not be able to receive their score, okay? And it forces this, this option, I'm gonna select it, and I want you to compare how it looks, okay? So if you see right now, uh, section one only has a uh, school description. Now I am going to go back and I'm going to select this option, okay? And I want you to see how the screen changes. Now it creates a field uh, for the user to enter a valid email address, okay? And that so you're kind of forced to enter an email address. I hope I answered um, your question. If I did, I will, I will continue. Okay. I think you got that question. Um, we do have one coming up about re, uh, choosing an image. Is it a drop down or a grid question? Did you want to address that later? Yeah. So, okay. So, you know, last week, if I encourage you to view, if you have not viewed the, the slides, I don't think the video is available yet, right? Um, that is something that we discussed last week. And let me go ahead and just give you a little 
quick demo of what that looks like right now. Okay, so I am, and and can I ask that person to to clarify uh, to just specify an image um, as an option or an image as part of your as part of your question? And that would be for Olivia. Option. Option. Okay. So let me just go to the one that we did last week. So it is. Oh my goodness. Okay. So you said this was for Olivia, right? All right, Olivia. So I am in my, I'm right here. I'm creating my question. Now, when you create a, a question, um, right here, okay, when you click on, if you select multiple choice or check boxes, um, you will see this little image icon on the far right, and that is how you would be able to add images as options, okay? Now, you also have um, the option to add images for your question, and that would be right here, okay? And that would be right here. So this right here is to add an image maybe as a part of your question. And this little icon right here would be to add an image uh, for your options. Okay, so let's just do a quick example. Puppy. I always go with puppies. Safe option. Adorable. Okay. So I would search. I would search either in your camera or through your photos, your Google Drive, or just through Google. And then you would select, you would select whichever picture, whichever picture you want, and then you go ahead and you insert it. Okay, and so maybe I would type in option A. Okay, uh, all right. I hope that that answers your question. Now, Olivia, keep in mind that you may not have the option to add pictures for every question type, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, like for example, it definitely will not give you the option to add pictures in a question type for linear scale, okay? So it won't be available for each question type, but it is available in some types of questions. Okay, back to hyperlinks, yes? Yes. All right, got it. So hyperlinks, right? I'm sure you've all interacted with hyperlinks in your uh, it, through email or you know even when when you're navigating a website, you, that is how a website operates, right? Through hyperlinks. Now, if you do not know, you know what this word is specifically. It's just a a file or a document that is connected, is linked to something in a different location, right? So if I click on the home button, the home, I'm sorry, the home uh, tab, it's going to take me to a, the home page, right? But that is essentially what a hyperlink is. Um, you know, usually they appear in blue or maybe they're in bold, depending on the platform that you're using, it might look a little different. As you can see here on Google Slides, it looks red, okay? Now, uh, just something to keep in mind that hyperlinks can be created on in documents, uh, emails, websites, uh, you name it, okay? Hyperlinks are not limited to um, Google applications. You can, you can create a hyperlink as long as you have a web address, all right? You can create a hyperlink. Now I want you to show you. I want to show you some some examples right here on this on the slide. Now, if you see here, I've I'm using the O10 website. Okay. Now this is just um, in black, and it appears as my text up above. Now here, I have this, and it's underlined, and it's in red. Now, usually that's how I want. If you see here, when I hover over these words. It, I still have that little arrow. My cursor is an arrow. However, if I hover over these words, my cursor turns into the little hand with a pointing finger. And that is how you know, that is one way that you can, that you know that something 
is hyperlinked. So if I click on this, whoa, it's going to take me to that location, right? To this wonderful, wonderful website with wonderful people. All right, so coming back to this. Okay, so I have hyperlinked the actual web address and I have actually also, I have also typed in text, right? It says OTAN, it says OTAN resources, and I, uh, you know, usually gives the, the reader a little bit more, maybe more information about where they are going, uh, you know, in case you rather not just give the web address. Now here you have a little picture, right? You have a little picture and it says click here. Now if you notice, once again, we have that little hand with the pointing finger, uh, and that means that it is also hyperlinked, okay? So if I were to click here, I have once again hyperlinked it to the OTAN website, okay? All right. Now, once you view the slides uh, later, there's a little how-to video, okay? I'm going to show you how to create a hyperlink as well, but I am going, uh, there is also a little how-to video, okay? Now, um, if you are on a Mac, there are some keyboard shortcuts for Windows and Macs, right? I've, you know, I've never created a hyperlink on a tablet or a, or a smartphone, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has done that, but I never had the need to, to learn how to do that. But um, all right, so these are some keyboard shortcuts for you to, for you to know. Now, sometimes maybe you will see uh, the option, this little paperclip looking thing, but it's actually a little chain link, okay? It's a chain link and that just, you would be able to click on that in order to, um, uh, to create the hyperlink. Now, once again, I showed you how, how you can tell if something is hyperlinked, right? If it is linked to something else. Uh, so, you know, you would do that by hovering, hovering over the text or the image and you notice to see if the, if the cursor changes. So once again, I see the little, I'm, I'm hovering over the word shortcut at the top and I see the arrow, the cursor is an arrow. But if I go here, my cursor is a little hand with a pointing finger. Now, one other way to know is, I'm not sure if you can view this through my screen, but uh, Melinda, maybe you can confirm this for me. When I hover over this, what do you see on the bottom left of my screen? Melinda, do you see anything I'm, pop no, up? You are presenting, um, so all we see is just okay. your cursor. Got it, okay. So, you know, this is something you, you could, maybe you've never noticed it before, maybe you have, but when you, when you hover, when you point at something that is hyperlinked, on the bottom left of your browser window, you will see the address that it is hyperlinked to. So this how-to text is actually connected to a YouTube video. So right now on my screen, I when I hover over, I see the web address for the YouTube video. So, you know, just uh, if you've never noticed it before as you're surfing the web, take, take a look at it and, and just uh, see what that looks like. Okay, so here you go. I'm gonna go ahead and, and show you how to, you know what, I'm gonna hold off on showing you how to hyperlink so that you can see examples first. Uh, next, we've got URL shorteners. Now URL is just a, another way, it's a technical term for a web address, okay? It's just a web address. Um, and what this URL shortener will do, the one that I choose is Bitly, okay? But there are many other URL shorteners out there um, that will do the same thing. And they just, you know, when you clicked on the link for the quiz earlier in the chat box, you saw this super, super long address, right? Now, can you imagine sharing that with your students and not hyperlinking it? Uh, 
or tr you know if you're trying to type it into your phone or try to trying to um, type it into your address bar that's just pretty insane right so what bitly what a url shortener will, like bitly will do is it will take your original web address and you can customize it okay you can customize that web address one little uh problem here okay um is that the person typing in this you this url shortener has to type in the exact link you gave them okay so for example you know i'm going to give you an example here of one that i created now if I give my students this, this URL, it's going to take them to this page, okay? Now let's imagine that I typed it in and I made a mistake, right? I made a mistake, I forgot to type in the six. So it's going to take them to an error. It will give them an error message of some sort. Um, there you go, yeah. So it's gonna give your user an error message. Um, <clears throat> one other thing to keep in mind with URL shorteners is that you cannot search for them. You cannot type them into a search box, right? So sometimes when I give links to my uh, URLs like this to my students and they try to search for it like this and they say, teacher, it's not there or teacher, I, you know, it's not correct. Uh, well, no, it, it is correct. You just have to type it in your Omnibox, your little address bar, okay? So those are just uh, something to keep in mind with Bitly. I'm not 100% sure if uh, the other URL shorteners um, work this, this way, um, but that is what I have found through using Bitly, okay? Um, right here. Melinda, how are we doing on questions? I know I'm talking a lot. I'm thinking you're okay. We did have a question about how did you create the uh, the image to be a, a hyperlink? Okay. Yes. And as I mentioned, that I will I will give you the how to, and I will give you demos after I get through uh, this presentation. So I'm going to talk to you. I talked to you about hyperlinks. Uh, talk to you about shorteners. I'm going to go into QR codes, and then is where I then is where I will begin the little demo and giving you an actual how to. Does that work? Yes. All right. Wonderful. All right. So let me show you QR codes. Okay. So this right here is an example of a QR code. I'm going to share a video, a very short video, with you about how to use it. So if you, if you have your uh, mobile phone handy, I would advise you to take it out um, and so you can practice using this with your phone right now. Okay. Hi guys, David here from payitforward.com at beautiful Ballymolo Cooking School in Ireland, here to show you today how to use QR codes on iPhone. Let's say you're in a beautiful location and you want to learn more about something you see. Now, you could read the text, which is kind of boring, or you could look down here and you'll see this little square thing with a lot of dots. You've probably seen them in all sorts of places. They used to only really work with Android phones, but now iPhones support them. Here's how to use it. To use QR codes on iPhone, the first thing you need to do is open the camera app. For QR codes to work correctly, photo needs to be selected. You can't be taking a video like my iPhone is set to do right now. So I'm going to swipe from right to left on that bottom slider and choose photo. Now, since I've selected photo, a notification comes down from the top of my iPhone, and in this case it says open cookingisfun.ie in Safari. So all I need to do is tap on that, and that will bring me to the website address of the QR code. Now in this case, it shows up with a 404 error, which means that that website isn't found, but that's the website's fault, not the iPhone's. So that's how to use QR codes. Okay, so that is how to use QR codes on iPhones, but the concept is the same for other devices, okay? Tablets, um, <clears throat> tablets or Samsung, I'm sorry, Androids, okay? So the concept is the same. Now you do need to be running on a, on a 
later version. So if you haven't updated uh, your settings in a while and you, you can't do it with your phone, uh, maybe you should update. You should have all the, the latest updates. Now, if you're having trouble with your iPhone, you might be able to tweak some of your camera settings. So I have placed this link right here for you uh, that you can view later uh, to manage your iPhone camera settings. So right now, what I would like for you to do is that I'd like for you to give it a try. Please give it a try. And it's going to take you to uh, a Google form for you uh, to answer one just one question on a Google form, okay? And it's related to QR codes. So I'll give you, uh, if anyone is having trouble with it, uh, please let me know. Uh, once again, it might be just your phone and the latest version, uh, but usually, you know, now all, I wanna say that the majority of these devices will allow you to just do it with your camera without the use of an application. Um, so. Just let me know in the chat box if you, if you have been successful. Uh, actually, let me practice using QR code. Oh, wow, wonderful. Already 45 responses. Okay. All right, so, so far 45, 46 people say that it was, <clears throat> that it was easy for them. <clears throat> and only one person said that, no, it was not easy. All right. <clears throat> So all it takes is, is practice, I'm sorry, <clears throat> is practice. So I hope that one person who is having a difficult time with this QR code will uh, either practice or ask me a question. Uh, you know, if your students or yourself or who, whoever it is that you are sharing the QR code with uh, is, is not able to do it on their phone, is not able to do it on their phone just by using their camera, I have provided, I've provided you with, with a link, with um, two links actually, right? Uh, where they would be able to, it offers a variety of applications, of free applications that you could download on your mobile device and it will read the QR codes for you. All right, so we have come to, to the end of my presentation. And now I would like to show you some examples. Sorry. <clears throat> All right, but before I go into sharing the examples with you, you do I have any questions that I can answer right now, Melinda? <clears throat> How do you make a QR code is the question. Of the All day. right. <laughs> yes, exactly. So once again, I'm going to show you now some examples of what this looks like. And then I will go into the into a how to. All right. I, of course, I'm going to show you how to do these. Um, I would not unleash this on you and then not show you how to do it. But before we we get into that, I want to show you. I want to show you what this might look like for your audience. What do hyperlinks look like in text? What do hyperlinks look like in images? Uh, with a URL shortener or with, um, with a QR code, right? So I'm going to show you how I share this with my students because that is how I use Google Forms mostly with my students. So in the chat box, I think this is the first link that was shared, uh, that I shared by mistake. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to share the, the link one more time in the, in the chat box. If you just give me a moment and it's going to take you to a special page that I created for us for this webinar. Okay. And the, the page should look like this. Okay. So what I, what I wanted to do for you here, is I wanted to show you how my students or how my audience uh, connects to a Google form, okay? So, either, you know, on the left, I have an example type, so either a hyperlink, a QR code, or a URL shortener. And on the right-hand side of the page, this is how it will look like, okay? So here, in the first example, I have hyperlinked text, okay? 
and I have hyperlinked the word here, as you can see. So when students click, click there, it will take them to a Google form about museum field trip options. All right, um, hyperlinking an image, it's right there. Okay, I, I see the image of a cute puppy. Yes, I am obsessed with puppies, all right? And it's going to take them to a Google form about tattoos, okay, about tattoos. Uh, using, a, using the URL shortener, okay? Um, here it is, here is the address. Now, if you notice, this one is not hyperlinked, okay? But um, sometimes I, I also like to share this shortened URL for students who don't have any uh, access right at the moment when I ask them to. They just, maybe they like to access this, this document later on at home and so they could have the address, they could have this address and access it at a later time on a different device. Uh, so I also share the actual um, URL with them, okay? And here, this is just how it looks and it is hyperlinked to the same page, okay? Which is a journal. All right. Fun stuff. So now the QR code, right? The QR code. So here, uh, you know, I ask the students to scan the code with their phone, and by scanning by scanning this this code, it will take them to whatever homework is assigned. Okay, and I believe it's also. Oh, this is the, it's connected to the quiz that you just took today. Okay. Now I use for a free generator, okay? And I will go, I will go into that uh, in, a, in a moment, okay? I just wanted to point out that below at the bottom of the page, I have posted all of the, th the things that you worked with today, all right? So the slides for my presentation today, the quiz that you took, and the QR question, okay? So it is right there, okay? So are you guys ready to do some practice with hyperlinks? I hope you are. Okay, so let me go to a YouTube video, okay? I already have one. I already have a YouTube video here open for us, okay? Now, the first thing that I am going to do is, if you give me one moment, once again, uh, you can create a hyperlink with any web address, okay? With any link that you have. So what I, right now, I'm going to hyperlink uh, some text to this video. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to get the address for this video. And I can do this two ways. I can either copy it from the top, right? I can copy it, or I can take it from this little share arrow. I can copy it like that. Okay, so let me do that once again. My option is uh, to copy the, the address from the search, from the address bar, or I can go to a sh share arrow and I can copy the link to my clipboard as well. Now, now I'm going to type my text. But once again, I'm sorry, my internet is not cooperating right now. Okay, please watch this video. So now what I would do is I would select, I would select whatever text I want hyperlinked. So in this case, I just want the word video, okay? Now, if you notice, um, there is a link here. So I can either click on that, or I can use my sh uh, keyboard shortcut. I'm using a Windows computer, so I will do Control and K. Okay, so once again, I can, I will select and click on insert link or select and do my little keyboard shortcut, which I love. I love this keyboard shortcut. 
and I will apply. And that's it. Okay, that's it. Let me know if you need to see it, if you need to see it one more time. Um, all right, so now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing with, with, uh, with an image. Okay, the concept is the concept is the same. Monica, could you show that one more time as the um, creating a text link? For sure. Yes, and I will show you with a different different text. Okay. Let's do here. We something like please oh my god click here okay so i once again i've selected my text i i double click or i <clears throat> drag and select my text that i want to hyperlink i have two options i have two options either clicking on the link i'm sorry clicking on the icon for insert link uh, or the other quick way is to do the keyboard shortcut, the keyboard shortcut. Um, and I forgot to mention this, but obviously it, it will also be in your, if you have a right click on a Windows computer, you know, if you right click and the menu that comes up for the right click, you would select link. And fortunately, it gives me that handy reminder, control K would be the shortcut. Uh, I would then paste, I would then paste my link wherever I want this link to connect to. Yeah, in this case, it's a video, it's a video. So here you go, and I would just apply. All right, let me know if you want another example. I think that's got it. Okay, got it. So now I have this darling picture here, right? Uh, this puppy. Now, I would like to do the same thing, okay? I want to link it to the same video, okay? Now, you do have to direct your, your user, um, you do have to probably clue them in to, you know, having to click the image because since, you know, it's a little easier when you have text because it change, you know, it changes color or, or it changes uh, to being, you know, underlying text. But with an image, nothing is there. You know, nothing changes. The, the image looks the same. So maybe I would say something like, click, oh my goodness, I can't spell today. Click the image, okay? Click the image to go to the video. So once again, I the same thing. I would select. I would select. I now I've clicked on my picture, and uh, the options are the same. Okay, I can either click the insert link, the insert link icon at the top, or I could just click, click my picture, do the shortcut, or find it on my right click menu. Okay. There you go. I will select it. I'm sorry, I will paste it. And there you go. Oh, sorry, not working. Okay, sorry, not, I don't know why it's not cooperating with me. Okay, there, oh, oh, there he is. Oh my God, I'm doing the same thing I tell my students not to do. Okay, now if you see um, my, my window uh, is zoomed in, right? So when you click, when you click on, I'm using Google Docs, okay? So when you click on something on Google Docs or just, uh, the Google applications, it doesn't take you directly. You have this little box that opens up and then you would have to click on, you would have to click on that little box in order to go to the, 
the page that it is linked to. So the same thing happened with the picture. I just couldn't view it. It was outside of my window. I'm sorry. So here you go. So there, now my picture is hyperlinked. Um, I should I demonstrate it one more time? You let me know. I think we're good. We don't have any requests for a repeat. Okay. Oh, I take it back. We got one. Repeat. We got two. We got two <laughs> for okay. a repeat. Just a Go real ahead. quick one. Yes, please. Yes, most definitely. So give me one more. <clears throat> one moment. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do this with the image one more time, and then I'll show you the, the form. Okay. How to do it with the form. So I've, cl I've, so I've clicked on my picture. I see the, the little squares pop up. So I know that I'm, I'm uh, ready to make modifications to my picture or to my image. Right. So once again, I click it and I have the options to either insert a link here, okay, insert the link, or do my keyboard shortcut. And I should tell you guys that the keyboard shortcut works, this control K or command K, it's going to work on uh, Office apps, it's going to work uh, if you are on a, like Google applications. So if you're on your email, like Yahoo, it doesn't have to be Gmail, okay? Uh, this keyboard shortcut should work throughout, throughout. So, okay, I selected, I am going to link, and I'm going to now paste the link, and I apply. So now, when you click on the image, your, uh, that URL should pop, should pop up, okay? So let's go, let's go back up here. I'm going to delete this link and I'm going to link it to to uh, a Google form okay now here I am on my Google form and what I'm what I have done to see the link is I click I have to click send right so I click send to share with my with my audience and now I have different options I can send it to them. I could share this Google form with through email, right? And I can send them an email. Now, there's us, you know, sometimes you send a Google form to lots and lots of people. So if you want to maybe copy and paste everyone's email address in here, maybe that's easiest, but um, I find it's just easy to uh, not send it via email for myself because I have a lot of students. Right, so here you go. Here is a link. If by clicking on this uh, chain link, you see you see the actual URL. Now Google will shorten it. However, it is still pretty confusing, right? So can you just imagine typing that URL onto your phone or type, you know, having to, I mean, copying and pasting is pretty easy, you know, but uh, there's a smoother way to, to do it now. This, these two little arrow looking things, these are to embed, okay, onto your website. So today we're not talking about embedding, okay, so I'm not even gonna go there. Uh, links, so I have my link here. I have my link, I will copy it. I will copy it, and now I'm going to go back to, to this text, right? So please click here. Once again, I have the option of clicking insert link, control K, or right click. There you go. So now when, when um, my students click on this link, they will go, it will take them to their Google form, okay? Um, should I show that one more time, Melinda? Sure. Why not, right? Okay, so once again, I am done with my Google form and I'm ready to share it. So I will go to this, to this send button up on the top right. Um, I will get the link for this form, okay? Get the link, I will copy it. 
and I will select the text, select the text that I want to hyperlink, which is just the word here. I will either click on the insert link icon, I will do control K, or I will right click and find the option for link. I will then paste the link into the link box and I will apply it. And there you go. All right. Now just be careful that when you when you copy it, sometimes make a little mistake and I maybe I accidentally, you know, in this address that I that I copy, maybe I accidentally erase a letter or a character from this address and I click apply. And now, that's why it's important that you test it out. Oh, look, it still did it. Okay, well, uh, you know, sometimes if you make a mistake and you erase or you modify the address in some way, shape, or form, and uh, it will it will give them an error message. So just make sure you test test out your hyperlink several times before you share, before you write it out. Uh, okay, we're good on hyperlinks. All right, so moving on to URL shorteners, okay? URL shorteners. Now, Bitly, please stop me, Melinda, if I should go back to hyperlinks, okay? I think we're good. All right, so Bitly, uh, I've created an account on, on Bitly. Uh, it's free, okay? It is free and it is wonderful. Uh, I'm sorry, when I, I'm, I already have an account, so it automatically takes me to this page, um, but let me just search for it for you. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Oh, let me take me. Okay, so this is what it looks like once you're signed in, okay? Now, what you have to do is you have, um, if you notice on this page, on this window, these are all the, the URL, uh, the shortened URLs that I have created uh, in my, probably like in the last two years, okay? In the last two, three years. Now, let's, let's take that same, that same, uh, this, sorry, let me, where was it? That same link for this Google form, okay? So once again, I click on send. I copy the link for this form. I will copy it. And now I am going back. Now I'm ready to create. So I will select create. This little window pops up on the right. I will paste the very, very long URL. And now, uh, if you see it, it says customize back half. So what I can do is either share this one that is automatically generated by bit.ly, the bit.ly forward slash 323 E4AG. Now that still seems a little confusing to me. So I'm going to maybe make it a little more uh, give them a little more context. So maybe this is a, imagine it's a quiz. It's a quiz on week two, for example. Okay. So it's a little more, it gives the, the students or whoever you're sharing this shortened URL with a little more context about this, uh, this link. Now, if you see, now it is in gray and I can save it. Oh, and then I get this error message, which says that this customization is not available. And you know why it's not available? It is because somebody else has already created uh, a link like this. So what I have to do is now I have to tweak it. I have to keep tweaking it until there's, until I've created a unique one. So let's say maybe uh, quiz, quiz one week two. I'm going to try and save it again and hopefully I'm lucky. 
Perfect. So now it says link has been edited. All right, and you can go ahead and copy, copy it and uh, share it with your share it with your audience. Now, when I copy it, it looks like this. HTTPS. Now, we don't need this. So, and it's more confusing when you give them HTTPS, right? That you have to type a little more. So, I just erase it and I just give uh, students or other people, uh, I just give them this address, right? Just starting with bit.ly. All right. And now when I have Imagine I give this to you in an email, right? And I don't hyperlink it. I will copy and paste this and it will take me to this quiz, okay? Let me repeat that one more time and I'm going to use a different form. So once again, I will get the link. I will copy it. Okay, and I'm ready to create. That's a very long URL, right? So let's see, here you go. QR quiz. Let's see if we're lucky. Okay, no. So maybe QR quiz July. I'm just throwing out ideas here, okay? Uh, you, you can find your own way of making uh, your URLs. I try to make them, uh, try to give them a clue about what it is that this URL is for. So, you know, for this, this is a, a quiz on QR codes, right? So this is QR quiz. Uh, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a test test on week one, right? So I find that that is helpful for them because um, it's, it helps, with the, it helps with the spelling, right? And let me tell you what I have encountered. Um, when maybe you use the number, like the letter L, for example, right? Some students might still get confused and think that it's a one so on their when they're typing on their phone or on the computer maybe they select the number one instead of l so i try to avoid uh maybe some confusing letters like that so normally i would not use july okay i wouldn't use july uh i try to make it something that's a little more relevant to to them so let's let me go back and change this qr quiz uh let's do zero seven uh, zero, whoa, zero nine. Oh my goodness, it's invalid. Okay, so let's try QR quiz uh, 2020. All right, that works, perfect. So now I will copy it and I am going to post this either on my website like I showed you or I'm going to send it in an email, or I will send it in a chat box. If we're in a virtual meeting, I will write it on the board. Um, here you go. Okay. Does, are, are we good on, on URL shorteners? Any questions I can go back to? I think you're okay. Okay. Can uh, you can just eliminate the HTTPS from the shortened URL that Bitly gives you? Yes, you can. But will it work? Yes, of course. So what I, I showed you, I demonstrated it for you. So let me go ahead and do that again. So uh, let me undo it, okay? So that you can see both. So here we are, we have the lo much longer one. Okay, so I'm gonna copy it and I'm going to paste it into a new tab so that you can see. All right, so it takes me to where I need to go. And now I am going to, well, to only copy this.
here you go, no HTTP. There we go. There you are. Now, if you notice... M Monica, we didn't yeah. see that. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my, my share. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. There so we here, go. Now we, now we see your blinker. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let me, let me show you that one more time. Okay. Here's a long, here's a long address. Okay. Now when you type it in, if you notice it automatically identifies it. So it's, it is an option there, but I'm just going to go ahead and click enter and I am here. Now, if I decide to only use that beginning at bit.ly, I'll just copy that. And you see that I still, it still pops up. It's still an option. So there you go. It works. Still takes me to the same place. All right. If you know, if you, notice this trend on on browsers nowadays we, it's not necessary to type in that https or the or the ww dot anymore right it's um many times uh when you type in a web address you can eliminate those and it will still work okay so that i hope that answers that question for you um, may I may I move on? Absolutely, and we've got about fifteen minutes. Oh my goodness! Just, time just flies. so much. I know time flies when you're having fun, right? Okay, so up next we've got our QR code generators. Okay, so as I shared with you through the little uh, QR quiz that you took, uh, I my shared my the website that I that I like to use. Um, it's free, it's free, and it will let you create as many QR codes as you want, okay? So what I do is I type in the, the address and it automatically takes me to this page. There's not a, this is the home page, okay? So what I will, what I will do when creating a QR code is you have to select the URL option. Now, if you remember, I already have my, my link for my Google form. So I will, oh, no, sorry. I have to get it one more time. Okay. There you go. All right, so now it is, it automatically generates a little picture for you. And that is your QR code. Now what you have to do now is you have to save it, right? So it will, you will just, uh, oh, sorry. Um, here you go. You have some options for size. Uh, there you go. If you wanna make it bigger or smaller, this is a standard size that I use. I think this is a good size. Uh, and all you would do is you would just save. You would save it. Um, Monica, do you need an account to use this? Is it free? It is free, yes, it is free. And that is a lovely part about it that you do not need an account for this. Uh, so you could just come on this website, generate as many QR codes as you want. There's no commitment to signing in or anything like that, okay? Uh, so uh, now what I would do is I would save it, okay? Uh, and it, it's going to download it to your computer as an image, okay? In whatever, in whichever format you choose. So I always choose PMG, okay? That works, that works for me. Uh, and I will save it. And once again, when you save it, it's going to download the image to your computer, okay? So now I am, um, there you go. It's going to pop open in a second. My computer is running slow, as you know. Oh my goodness. 
So when I when I'm in a virtual in a virtual meeting with my students, I usually have the QR code prepared, like what you're about to see, in whenever my computer decides to run this. Uh, so when it comes time in the lesson for students to, you know, access something that I I have a QR code connected to. I just pop this window up and I say, all right, students, take out your phone, uh, you know, scan the QR code and, uh, and, or I would put it in my Google Slides presentation, like what you, what you saw today. And that is how, that is how I use QR codes in an actual virtual meeting. It's very useful because it's very quick access. You know, when, um, for example, some students and, and you know, maybe even some, some of us when we're using Zoom might be a little confusing uh, to, you know, minimize the Zoom screen and uh, follow along. So when, when I, um, you know, I ask students sometimes to have their phone handy when I have a QR code and it's it's smoother for them because they don't have to interrupt their zoom window because yes yeah, some of my students have very limited digital skills but they know how to use a phone camera and you know some of them i i had to walk through several times this uh how to use the qr code but it's effective once they get it they won't forget it and it's a time it saves us time right because that way they can be on their be on their zoom window and that they can have either a google form or whatever it whatever it is i i have linked to a qr code um, so i'm going to show you that one more time and i'm going to select a different google form okay um, let me just go ahead and grab a different link Okay, so I'm on my Google form. I am going to access the link for this Google form. I will copy it and I will go to my QR code generator for free. And all I do is I'll just delete it and I will paste my new, my new link and it automatically generates it. Okay, I have to save it. I have to save it. And this was Google Form number two. It's going to download to my computer. And, you know, if you want to then once you once you have the image on your computer, um, you want to put it on your website or you want to send it on an email, send it in an email, right? You can always just send either include it in the body of an email or add it as an attachment, um, you know, or include it in Google Slides. Um, you know, there's different ways for you to share this image. Again, I have found it really useful and it's it saves time in class uh, when I have Google Forms in a QR code uh, during a virtual meeting. Again, once again, like it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't uh, have, and students don't have to interrupt whatever they have going on on their computer, you know, and they can just use their phone on the side and not do anything on their computer especially for those that were very limited in their knowledge of using Zoom. Okay, which Monica, is what I used. Yes. How would you copy that QR code and put it in your document? Got it. So all you would do is um, you've got your, I've got my image open. I've got my image and I copy, right? I would copy it. And let's say I post it on this Google Doc, okay? Here you go. And that's it. Now, I'm gonna show you a, a neat little trick, okay? Um, so that's all I did. I copied and pasted, right? 
a more complicated way for you to do that would be to insert an image, right? You would upload an image from your computer. But we're all about being effective here, right? So if you already if you already have it open, all you would have to do is copy and paste, right? But if you do not have it open, uh, then you would have to download, sorry, upload the image from your computer and go through that process. Um, so let me just show you what that looks like. Here you go, here's the image. And there you go. Okay, so that's, that's another, that is another way of putting it on your document. So let me show you the neat little shortcut. I'm saving it. I'm saving it. And now you see how, uh, tell me if you see this, Melinda. Do you see it on the bottom left, how it's downloading on my browser? Yes. Yes, okay. Got it. So something that's really handy is if I just click on this, I drag it, I drag it, I, I click on this little thing on the downloading and I drag it into my file and it will automatically appear. So that's, I'm all about finding shortcuts and this is just wonderful, right? Because you can just click and drag it into whatever uh, you have open in your web browser. I hope you like that little tip and trick. Um, okay, how are we on QR codes? What is the dynamic QR code versus what you are doing? Okay, so that is a fantastic question, right? And I share, it's in that, um, I think maybe they saw it in the page that I shared regarding QR codes. And, you know, to be honest, I went to QR codes out of necessity. So I don't know too much about them, but I know that the difference between this, uh, Q, the QR codes, I know that it is explained on, on this page that I shared with you. All right, it's already been shared with you. And right here, what is a static and dynamic QR code? All right, I didn't know there was a difference. I just know it worked for me, and that that is that is uh, that is what I know. I'm sorry that I can't give you a better a better explanation about that. Um, so this is this is as much as I know about QR codes, um, static and dynamic. Uh, I'm, whatever it says here, it sounds like something that is maybe a little little fancier, something that. I might not need or we might not need. Um, but here it says, right, static, um, the different, the differences between a static and here you go, dynamic. Um, okay, so dynamic, it seems like just like when you create a Google form, right, and I can make constant changes to my Google form, right? Now, imagine you already took this quiz, right? You already took this quiz. Now, what I've done is I go in and I add three questions to it. So I tell you, all right, go to the same link, right? Just click on the same link I gave you a minute ago. And now you will see, you will see the form with my updates, with my updates. So we call that a live, it's a live document, right? So I guess with QR codes, they call it dynamic because as you make changes to it, as you make changes to it, then, uh, sorry, wrong page. It will remain, the QR code will remain the same, okay? Um, so that, that is what I know from reading this, from reading this, okay? All right, Melinda, it is 2.28. I believe that I have already told you as much as I need to, to tell you about sharing your Google form. Um, if you, once again, you already have the link to my, to my website where I have the examples of what these look like and where you have the resources um, that I shared with you today. You know, in these forms, I shared 
tutorials and I shared uh, links to learn more about something like QR codes, for example. So that is that is in you know that is within the Google form. Um, anything I can add to that, Melinda? I don't think so. Um, I, we don't have any open questions in the Q and A. Uh, could you, I, the chat is moving pretty fast, so uh, could you copy that site, uh, Nate, the URL, or unless you have a shortened URL, and could you paste that in the chat, Monica? Yes. That's the only thing that, that's come up. Okay. So Yeah, let me do that. Let me do that right now. Okay. So I do have a shortened URL to, uh, to my Google Sites. That would be great. I do. I do have it. And... Um, I didn't share that with you because I gave you the specific link to this page, okay? So I'm going to type it in the chat box right now. Uh, uh, now, my shortened URL is bit.ly forward slash ESL students 16. Um, 16 is my room number, is my classroom number. Uh, so, you know, it just gives them a little more context within the shortened URL. So I've typed it into the chat box and I will, I, I know that it, the chat box is moving pretty fast. Okay, so I'll type it in there uh, a few more times uh, and make sure that you go into Google Forms part two of three. That is a tab that I created for us for this webinar. Uh, 